Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals. Let me get a sip of my water first. Get my radio voice going and let's talk about this. Okay, so I had someone bring up the point when talking about uh, omega-6 fats this morning. They're like, but aren't they inflammatory? And the short answer to that is no. The long answer is one of them which is not the one we're generally going to be eating in any of the foods we're talking about is inflammatory. But there is a long-standing uh, hypothesis that I think someone came up with maybe 25, 30 years ago, suggesting that they could be inflammatory, but it has since been debunked in the lab. And I'll, I'll go into detail of that a bit in the video, the history of it and why they thought it was, but it was before it was studied and it got repeated as fact uh, by even by medical doctors, by some nutritionists and other people, uh, and some doctors, some quack doctors wrote entire books on it, by the way, 20, 25 years ago. The problem is it's been debunked and people say, well, can you prove it? I, I don't even want to link 12, 15, 30, 100 links on this. Uh, so what I would recommend you do, if you really care to see the data and the write-ups, Simply go to Google, type omega-6 anti-inflammatory. You will find enough studies and enough articles by medical experts and nutrition experts to keep you busy for the next month. But you can be your full-time thing reading that. But I will summarize it in a minute. So, because uh, I have spent a few hours reading through a lot of it. All right, essentially what we know is that the one omega-6 uh, fatty acid, arachidonic acid, is inflammatory. Keeping in mind, when we say inflammatory, we don't mean something is entirely inflammatory with no anti-inflammatory properties. This is where it gets complicated. A lot of things that we eat cause both <laughs> some inflammation and some anti-inflammation. The, the question becomes, what's the sum total? Is the net effect inflammatory or anti-inflammatory when it's all added up? So the point we're gonna to get to with that is that's what we're gonna discuss with the uh, omega-6s. Now, arachidonic acid does not appear in any plants. So if you're getting your omega-6 from grains, nuts, whatever, seeds, I don't care. Uh, there's usually not arachidonic acid. It's usually a linaic acid, which is the essential one. This is the one that we cannot produce at all. Now, just like we can make ALA into EPA and DHA with omega-3s, most people are familiar with that concept. The body does have a pathway to make linaic acid into arachidonic acid, but it's a very small amount. Okay, and here's the kicker. Just like people say, but you can't get enough EPA and DHA from ALA, it's, it's so inefficient, it's such a tiny amount, right? When you say that, it doesn't occur to them to think the same thing with the arachidonic, because it's the same pathway. It, I, I think it's the same enzymic pathway, actually. So the thing is, you can get enough of those for health. This has been noted in, in data. You don't actually have to consume EPA and DHA to be healthy. There are certain medical reasons why you might want to megadose them, but that's going to exceed how much most people supplement for specific, a specific cardiovascular issue. Usually a doctor may prescribe a very large dose of prescription fish oil or you know, specific omega-3s for it. But for general health, you only need trace amounts, very, very small amounts. Uh, and your body can make it out of ALA if you get a sufficient amount in your diet. So we come over to the LA and arachidonic acid. It's kind of the same thing. Your body does need a trace amount of arachidonic acid, but it can make a little bit. Now, because it can do so, people postulated, well, it's inflammatory, so therefore eating large amounts of omega-6s will cause a large amount of arachidonic acid and it will cause inflammation, right? That was the hypothesis. Keeping in mind when people are saying this, it's not a bunch of studies found it. It was an untested hypothesis. Meaning researchers and medical experts said, hey, this could in theory happen. The pathway exists. 
All right? Just like the pathway exists to store carbohydrates as body fat, but it happens at such a small rate, it's impossible to actually get fat doing it, right? But I mean, the hypothetical pathway is there for de novo lipogenesis, but there's no way you're gaining five pounds of fat in a year doing it. It's not going to happen. It's not practical. It doesn't really actually happen. It's the same thing with the arachidonic acid. When they've studied it, what they found is like, well, only a trace amount. Even if we eat a lot of it, it's only a trace amount. So here's the kicker. The other omega-6s are all anti-inflammatory. So what do they find in the research? People who eat large amounts of omega-6s especially if they give it to you directly in the lab. So let's say they put you in the lab and they just give it to you in the metabolic order that measure your inflammatory markers in your blood. Measure all of them. Let's see how much inflammation is changing. It usually goes down. Omega-6 is, again, if we're dealing with starting with the plant form, because there is some arachidonic acid in some animal products, like eggs have a fair amount of arachidonic acid. You know, which is, again, kind of strange. The same people who were afraid of omega-6s because there may be a hypothetical inflammatory pathway will eat the end product that causes the inflammation directly, which is because is, it's in red meats, it's in uh, eggs, things like that. There's a significant amount. It's been speculated that that itself is its own cardiac risk factor aside from saturated fat. That's, again, a hypothesis not fully agreed upon so we can't say that for sure we know the saturated fat does and again there's plenty of, of of hard data on that at this point but set that aside it's a completely different topic so the net effect is anti-inflammatory now does it mean that it's the best anti-inflammatory? No, it's actually pretty mild. Like the net result is a very mild anti-inflammatory. Omega-3s are, are more anti-inflammatory than omega-6s. Now, keeping in mind, that is still, even if some of the, the ALA is converting into arachidonic acid, what happens? That causes a little inf inflammation, but the anti-inflammatory effects of the rest overshadow it. So the other omega-6 is in the mix then because there could be a couple conversions happening here and there. Uh, just like I think there are six different omega-3s. You can make all of them out of ALA, but they don't reverse the other direction. You can't make the other ones back out of EPA, DHA, and all that. So it's a one-way sequence. Um, and you do need some of those others for survival and health. And there are health benefits. So... The net result is that omega-6s, particularly from those sort of sources, are mildly anti-inflammatory. There's a reason nuts, these nuts, are associated with better cardiac health, right? Nuts are generally good for you. The only downside might be the calorie density if you're struggling with weight loss. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.